Hey everyone, uh, one of you out there, uh, Latin Sizer, asked for me to put a little video together of some of my favorite things in my game collection. I've not really done this before. It's a great idea. I don't know why I've not done it up until now. But I thought I'd share a few things that I really like in my collection. Uh, typically I collect things to play. I do have a few things here that I just picked up because I really liked them. Uh, didn't plan on playing them. Well, let's get right to it here. Probably one of the one of my favorite things I have in my collection are these little beat art guys. Got Pookie, Rygar, Dig Dug. These were done by my good friend uh, Robert Ferguson, who does the Atari Twenty Six Hundred Game by Game podcast. Uh, he sent these to me not too long ago, just out of the blue. Uh, really like them. He does a real good job with this beat art. I have to say, they're pretty cool, man. Let's see here. Oh, for my Vetrix, of course, my Vetrix is one of my favorite things in my collection. But I'm going to, I'm not going to haul that thing down from up there. I got a signed multi cart from Sean Kelly for the Vetrix. Uh, Sean is a co founder of the, uh, the Video Game History Museum that's down in Frisco, Texas. I visited his store up in Norwich, Illinois, Video Games Then and Now. And he was selling these uh, $50 a piece. I think he still has some. And I asked him to sign mine. I think it's really awesome that he put these cartridges together for the Vetrix system. Along the same vein as the Vetrix, I picked up a multi-cart for the Vetrix. This is SD card based. This was made by Richard Hutchison. You can find him on Atari Gage. I think these were like $85 if I remember correctly. But what's nice about this is if you get some homebrew ROMs that you want to play in your Vetrix, you can just put them on the SD card, run this little program in here called Auto Updater, and it'll update the menu selection screen to add the ROM you just put on the crazy card. Really awesome. Uh, I mainly picked this up for Vetrix Radio, the podcast I do with my buddy Jeremy, so I can uh, look at some homebrew games and talk about them on the podcast. Yars Revenge. I really love Yar's Revenge. Now, what makes this one special is this one was signed by Howard Scott Warshaw. Uh, had this done at Classic Gaming Expo 2014. Uh, I was in the back running the console room, but I ran across Mr. Warshaw, and he was uh, more than happy to sign this for me, so I was pretty happy to get this. Also, I've got a signed copy of Defender for the Atari 8-bit. Uh, by the programmer Steve Baker. He also did the Atari 5200 version of this game and we actually had an interview on the Atari 5200 Super Podcast with Mr. Baker where we talk about Defender and some of his other stuff that he did. A really nice guy. I'm happy to have that in my collection. Also I have a signed Casey Munchkin by Ed Averett who did a lot of games on the Odyssey 2. actually got to meet him at Classic Gaming Expo 2014 as well. He did a panel talking about the Odyssey 2 and everything. Really awesome panel to listen to. Now this is kind of quirky, but it's, it's kind of neat. Uh, somebody made a little cartridge to take chips, ROM chips, to play on the Atari 2600. I found this in a box with an Atari 4 switch and some games I picked up off of Craigslist. Uh, don't know the history behind this, but it's, it's pretty neat what they did. Of course, I really like my multi-cart for my Channel F. Uh, the Channel F was a system I grew up with. It was one of the earlier video game systems I had. Uh, this multi-cart is made by E5 Frog. You can find them on Atari Age. And it's got all the games for the Channel F plus some homebrew games on here. It also includes E Frog's awesome Pac Man port to the Channel F. It's actually a better Pac Man game than what's on the 2600, but the Channel F is more archaic than the, than the uh, Atari 2600. So that's kind of wild. Really great multi cart. Love that thing. Of course, my pal John sent me one of his Game Straight One video games 
for the ColecoVision. This is the Classic Gaming Expo uh, version that he signed for me. Uh, he just gave this to me. John's a very good friend. He's very supportive in everything I do. Uh, he's kind of like a mentor for me on YouTube and stuff. So I really like that he sent me this. I'm very appreciative. Of course, I love Tempest. So I got Tempest 3000 for my new one. This is the only game I got for my new one. And it's the reason why I've got a new one. Is because of this game right here. I love this game. It's very psychedelic. It's kind of like Tempest 2000 on the Atari Jaguar. But it's just more amped up with the with the visuals. Uh, since TXK came out on the PlayStation Vita. It's kind of replaced this one as my go-to Tempest game to play now. But I still really enjoy this game on my new one. I've got a nice signed Pitfall 2 by David Crane. Awesome. I'm really happy to have that in my collection. I love the stuff David Crane has done with Activision. Now, the only reason why I picked this game up here is because of the box art. It's sealed. I normally don't collect sealed games. Like I said, I like to play them. I do have a loose cartridge of River Raid 2 for my 2600. But I came across this. And I just had to have it because I love the box art. And plus, it looks pretty much pristine. So I just I just have this in my collection just because of the box art. It's so awesome. Of course, a recent acquisition that I really, really like is my Super Game Module. Made by Opcode Games for the ColecoVision. I've already got a couple of games that use this. Uh, Galaga from Collector Vision and Rollerball, which is a very cool pinball game. I'll be doing a video on that here pretty soon for the Pinball Electronica series that I've been working on. So, really awesome, really awesome little module here. Of course, my buddies at Richard Gaming Roundup got me one of these uh, Atari 600 games called CGE Adventures. Uh, this is based on a story I can't remember if it was Classic Gaming Expo uh, 2010. I can't remember. But they had a pile of CDs uh, for the podcast, Retro Gaming Roundup. And this uh, hearing impaired gentleman stole all the CDs and ran off with them. So it's been like a running gag on their on their show about this, this guy stealing all the CDs. And Bite Night of Atari Age made a game out of it. It's actually a lot of fun. You have Scott and UK Mike and her running around chasing you while you're, while you're trying to find the, the stack of lost CDs. It's kind of like a venture, basically is what it's like. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun to play. Also from Bite Night, he sent me a Ultimate ColecoVision Flashback, which I've done a video on this. Some of you have probably seen it already, some of my older subscribers. But some of my new ones, you may not have seen this yet. I did a little video review of this showing all the different games. You can actually plug in the original ColecoVision controllers into this. Of course, you can use the flashback controllers. You can use the turbo steering wheel on this. You can use the roller controller on this. You can use the super action controllers on this. Sega Genesis controllers. What's cool is you plug it in and it'll, it'll learn what controllers you have plugged in and it'll start using them. This thing is awesome. It's got a Raspberry Pi inside. You can update your ROMs to this little dongle right here. You put a little flash drive on there and it'll download the ROMs into the unit itself. It also has wireless capabilities. Uh, By night basically just gave this to me for making the video for him, trying to advertise this to get more people interested in getting one of these. I really appreciate uh, him sending me this and letting me keep it. It's, it's highly treasured in my collection. I, I love this thing. He also makes one for the Intellivision, too, called the Intellivision Ultimate Flashback. It's the same kind of deal. So if you're into Intellivision, you might want to check that out as well. Pretty awesome. Of course, at Game On Expo, I got a chance to meet and sit down and talk with Mr. Keith Robinson. And he gave me one of his signed artworks. This is for the diner game, and it says, Willie, don't let the hot dogs get you. Keith Robinson, 2015. Keith is such an awesome guy. He was a lot of fun to talk to. A lot of respect for that man. Uh, 
He's a great artist. He does a cartoon series as well that's really fun to read. So I'm pretty happy to get a hold of that. Probably one of the most treasured things I have in my collection is this Coleco Mini Cade Galaxian. This is the one I got from Christmas back in the early 80s. It was my first VFD game from Coleco that I ever owned. Now since then I've picked up the whole series. The Frogger, the Miss Pac-Man, the Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, the Zaxxon, all that stuff. I, I've got a real love for these Coleco Mini, Coleco, Coleco, these Coleco Mini Cades. Uh, I like VFD games in general, so these are actually pretty awesome. Another VFD game that I recently got a hold of from my buddy Matt from Matt's Game Exchange is a Frisky Tom VFD, which I've done a video on this already as well, talking about the arcade game. And this is part of that arcade game video that I did showing the gameplay of this. This is really a very fun VFD game. It's, it's, it's really awesome. Happy to have that in my collection. And of course, you know, being a Coleco fanatic, I finally got a hold of one of my favorite consoles I've been looking for, a Dina 2-in-1 that plays the SG-1000 games as well. I just recently did a video on this as well, which a lot of you already seen. But I've been looking for one of these since around 2010. So it's taken me almost six years to find this thing. And this was given to me by my buddies at Matt's Game Exchange again. So that's pretty awesome. I'm very grateful to those guys for letting me have that console. Also at Classic Gaming Expo 2014, I was able to get hold of one of the limited edition and television flashbacks. Now what makes this one so special? It has a special cover on it that on the back it's numbered. Mine is number 78 of 200. And it has all the Blue Sky Rangers, all the game programmers that made games for the Intellivision sign this. Plus it has some pictures from you know, back then when they were doing all, all this stuff. This is really cool. I'm, I'm really happy to have this. This was given to me by my buddy Scott Schreiber from Retro Gaming Roundup for helping out at Classic Gaming Expo. I had no idea he was going to give me one of these. So I was really pumped when he walked to my table and said, here you go. I was like, yeah! Yeah! Awesome! Another Clico console I've added to the collection, thanks to my good bud Joshua from Turtle Flakes Podcast, is the Clico Gemini he sent me. Complete in the box. All the thing I had to do to it was re-solder the, the connectors for the controllers. Uh, they're not really well supported, so with constant plugging and unplugging the controllers, you flex the circuit, and it'll break the little pins in the circuit board. So I re-soldered them, and I put some uh, hot glue around it to give it a little bit more extra support. Now it works perfectly fine. What's really neat about these Geminis is the combination controller they have here. It's got a paddle and a joystick both. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, let's see, what else we got here? My buddy Dwayne, for my birthday uh, last year, sent me one of these mini cades that he builds. This is the very first one he ever did, so he sent me the prototype. Uh, he's doing a different style now, which I showed on an earlier video with the interchangeable control pads and the rotatable screen and everything, but this was the very first one he ever made. This thing is awesome. It's got great sound. has a Raspberry Pi in it as well. It does multiple uh, consoles like, you know, uh, NES, uh, Turbo Graphics, uh, Atari Lynx, all that kind of stuff. But I mainly wanted it for arcade games. I originally was going to use this to take to shows when I have a table and stuff. But now that he's maybe the much bigger one that has interchangeable boards and everything, that one I'm starting to take to shows now instead. Uh, the first show I took it to was the Korgs event in Columbus, Ohio, just a few weeks ago. Pretty awesome stuff. And probably my most treasured, besides the Galaxian, which is up there. It's, it's hard to decide which one of these is my most treasured uh, item in my collection, because the Galaxian has a lot of sentimental value. But this other item I'm getting ready to show you is something that... I never thought I would ever get because it was only sold in Japan and thanks to the kindness of my buddy Jeremy who does Vetrix Radio with me and also the Greatest American Hero podcast he sent me a complete inbox Game Boy Light 
freaking awesome. It's like a regular Game Boy Pocket, but it's got a really nice Indigo screen. It's backlit. Only available in Japan. And this thing is, is incredible. Do I have any batteries in it, I don't think. Yeah, I keep the batteries out of it, but really awesome. This thing is really awesome. Okay, let's put some batteries in it. I gotta put some batteries in this. Battery. Battery. There we go. Where's the contrast? Where's the contrast? There it is. There we go. Okay, here we go. So we can turn it on. There's a nice indigo light. Awesome. Oh, is that cool? Just the contrast here a little bit. Super Mario Land. You can turn it off. Go to the middle here. You can turn the backlight off. Turn it back on. If Nintendo had done this in the States, this would have been freaking awesome. You could play the Game Boy at night. Pretty cool. So that's some of my favorite things from my collection I have. There's a few others, but uh, nothing real of note. I just want to pull out the most special things I had in my collection. So thanks again to Latin Sizer for the great idea to show some of my favorite things in my collection. I may do another one later on down the road, maybe show a few different things and get a little story behind them as well. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching.